floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSC call, so-called weekly, although okay, we are so skipping some. Right now, um... Oh, Tong, I think you're not muted. I'm sorry. All right. Um, so this is a public meeting. Everybody is welcome to join and contribute. There are two requirements, though. The first one is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently being displayed, otherwise linked or actually embedded in the agenda. So if you're not aware of this one, please have a look and make yourself uh, knowledgeable. The other piece is the code of conduct, which requires everybody to behave in a decent manner. Uh, oh, in passing, I do want to point out that uh, the code of conduct we have is based on the version of the Directory C code of conduct. And uh, the Directory C is actually in the process of revising their code of conduct to address a few issues that they have found uh, exercising their code of conduct. So it's, uh, it's been put up for approval to the membership and uh, I intend to bring it up to the uh, TSC when that is done. Uh, I assume it will just get through, but uh, let's wait to see that, you know, it's actually been approved by the R3C and then we can consider maybe upgrading ours accordingly. I know that other people who have been who are involved in different organizations i've said yeah i think this is good improvement i will push it further into other organizations i'm involved in and so i thought i should do the same so just that's just a heads up and you know it doesn't change drastically anything it tries to clarify a few things that people have found not so clear in the way it was worded in the first place so I think it's uh, probably a good improvement that we'll also want to, to uh, adopt. So with that done, um, let's get started with the meeting. First, uh, I don't know of any announcement, but I want to give everybody an opportunity. Is there any announcement anyone wants to make? That would be a good time. Uh, just just a request on the last thing that you mentioned. If if you have a link to the draft text, if you wouldn't mind sending that to the DCI list or to the TSC list, that'd be great. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's for the code of conduct. Uh, I will definitely do that. Happy to do that. Thank you. So announcements, any, anything else? All right. Hearing none, let's move on. There, are, there were two quarterly reports submitted, filed, Transact and Cello. Neither of them pointed out any issues. I didn't see any comments on the reports. Do people have comments or any issues they want to raise now? Otherwise, we'll just move forward. I didn't see anything on the reports themselves, and they've been reviewed by the majority of the TSC members, so I think we can just assume they have not uh, raised any concerns. I didn't put it in the comment section, but like I don't find like the maintainers are the same as the original project proposal. I don't really find useful to me as I review this because I don't remember what every project had for their project proposal and who the maintainers were. Yeah, I hear you. I, I have to admit the same thought crossed my mind when I saw that. So this is for the Transact report, right? I think it was the Transact one, yes. It's just, you know, am I, am I being lazy? Probably, but at the same point, I don't want to have to go back and look up the history of each one and compare to previous months and stuff. To yeah, and in fact, I thought the same, and it's like, at least if there was a link to the original, you would be able to just click and say, oh, okay, I see what that is. But uh, yeah, I think going a, to a, on a fishing a expedition is not much fun. I think so I, I think this is worth bringing up, but probably worth a comment to the report, Mark. I'm Can sure they'll respond. You can say, just at least put the link to the list, the initial. Uh, 
I think this is one place where um, if we can standardize the maintainers.md format um, to potentially also reflect diversity, perhaps some ta some tags per maintainer around however they would prefer to um, describe their their different characteristics. Um, that might be a way of automatically reporting this number and you know apples for apples with other projects. Yeah, that's true. If it's Which is easy. actually part of the proposed update in the next discussion item, yes. Yeah, we, we are going to talk about maintainers next, so. All right, anything else on the reports? Otherwise, we yeah, can move is, on. This yeah? is Chris. So, um, <laughs> I've tried now three times to get in to the wiki and, and check myself off. I can load the pages, but I can't log in. And this has happened multiple times in the last couple of days when I've been trying to weigh in on these things. Um, I don't know what there is, you know, Rye, if there's an issue with uh, um, LF login or something, but. So what I heard this morning, and uh, <clears throat> this surprised me, this, this doesn't affect me. Um, for whatever reason, my browser choice isn't affected, but uh, Marta pointed out that when she tried with Firefox, it was very fast. And if you look in the console, you'll see that there are a bunch of errors that happen very quickly. And with uh, Chrome and Safari, they seem to happen much, much slower. Um, uh, and I'm using Firefox, so that maybe explains it. So I, I'm using Firefox and I can't log in this morning either. So you're right, I, I don't know. I, this isn't biting me. If this was actually happening, I, I mean. Because. I did see some mention from LFIT that Auth0, um, the service, was having some issues, which is something we use for single sign-on. Um, uh, that was affecting JIRA, uh, um, the LF zone JIRA, a few days ago. I wonder if some of those, because it's, it's happening to me now too, but it wasn't happening before. This feels new to me, and this is on Firefox. Right, so I don't know. Um, I can file a ticket, perhaps, if I can log into JIRA. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I can shake that tree in Slack. Um, yeah, we'll chase this down, Chris. Um, yeah. This, is, this is annoying. Obviously. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's annoying. I mean, Firefox is my primary browser, just because I hit the, reload the IBM is optimizing to Firefox, so. That's good news, um, but, uh, but I, I had reload three times and finally got through. So I'm gonna, I'll chase this down personally. Yeah, I, I did um, get through for one of them. <laughs> yeah, so I mean. Uh, I've been the, able to do the transact ones. So, <laughs> so the, uh, I guess what I was saying wasn't clear. Uh, the Firefox is the browser that's working for Marta and, and not uh, Chrome and not Safari. Oh. And oh. so that's why I'm, Surprised that you guys are having these issues with Firefox. I'm sorry that you guys are having these issues with uh, LFIT. Um, so I promise I'll look into it. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I just logged in with Chrome, and I, I used Firefox, and it worked for me. But so I okay. suspect it's not browser related. But we'll we'll check in on that. There may there may be a problem. It's been noted. Let's move on. All right, so I'll let's get to the discussion to items. Uh, the first one is the common maintainers management policy. So Tracy put together a, a pull request and uh, several of us have commented. I've seen a few people, actually quite a few now. Uh, it's funny how important those calls are because it clearly motivates people to do their homework and all of a sudden there's a kind of an avalanche of uh, people who've approved <laughs> the pull request. So that's good. If anything, the call will have served that purpose. Uh, I think there is like one question that I know we've said, uh, I mean, Tracy and I were discussing something and then, you know, she said, well, maybe we can bring that up to the TSC. So I figured we could discuss this now. I think overall we're in pretty good shape. There is one important aspect is, you know, seems like there's general consensus on making it fairly liberal in the sense that it's really a guidelines, you know, it's guidelines and people can, you know, um, 
uh, adjust as they see fit, but at least, you know, the, if people don't have to reinvent everything, which I think is often the reason for uh, disparities from one project to another. One particular um, question that I did get raised is the question of whether the policy should be included in the maintainer's file or can it be linked from the maintainer's file? Personally, I think it's a fairly small issue, obviously, but um, it's uh, whether, no, it's, if you keep scrolling down, you'll find it right. Personally, I think it's important that people can find the policy. And so I think maintainer's file, we all have a maintainer's file, it's part of the common repo structure. We've discussed, you know, there's some kind of like guidelines on what you should be able to find in there. And I think you should find your way to the policy from there. Whether the policy itself is embedded in the maintainer's file or it's linked from it, I really don't care. I think both are acceptable. So that's my point of view, but you know, I'll uh, let others speak up if they feel strongly one way or another. I mean, like right now, the fabric project has it as part of the documentation. And so I think it is an easy fix is to add a link to the maintain to the from the maintainer's file to the documentation and they would be compliant. Otherwise they will have to copy it. And then there's the question where do you get duplicated? It's in the doc and the maintainer's file. You remove it from the doc, it's a bit mess. So I think adding the ability to have a link is uh, add flexibility. But you know, if I'm the minority here, I can go either way. So, Chris kind of voted uh, along with Tracy. I don't have a vote, but I'm in favor of a link for reasons that will become clear shortly, so. Okay. Anyone else? Do people work offline at all? Like would they download the Git repo and stuff and then go work offline and suddenly not be able to get to a link? And urgently, urgently need to know that policy. <laughs> well, it's just I, a general I comment. So <laughs> I don't know about you, but there's Mark, Mark very like little I can do nowadays offline. But well, so, my internet goes down a lot, so I work offline a lot. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm ambivalent. I think uh, what Tracy said that, you know, should already provide some flexibility. So if the way that you implement that field is you put a link in, that seems fine too. Okay. So that's another vote in favor of flexibility. I think we would allow a link. I don't have a vote either, but I'm with Rye on this one. I, I think a link uh, will make things nicer. I think the flexibility is a good idea and that we'll see a convention emerge and we don't have to decide on every detail of that convention now. Okay, so it seems like there is general consensus towards allowing a link. So anybody opposing it? We don't need to have a formal vote. I think if it's enough to enlighten the discussion and the, the direction, and then we can just update the PR to accommodate for the link. I'm in favor of whatever involves the least amount of continued discussion. <laughs> okay. Uh, what does that really mean, Chris? Can we get to the bottom I mean, of how you I feel? Was, I'm with you, Chris. I was that. I, you know, I, I, I wish we didn't even have to discuss this word. on this call, just to be clear. <laughs> I, Sorry, I, I was know. offline. What did I miss? Yeah. So, uh, Tracy, uh, do you <laughs> want, do you want this squashed and merged or do you personally want to do like a squash commit or what do you prefer, Tracy? Uh, I don't have any preference. If you want to hit that button, Ryan, you go ahead and hit that button. Push the button. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, giving yeah. the... 
I was giving the two weeks. Do it. <laughs> if there was anything else. All right. Well, no, but it hard. Yeah. All right. Yoink. There we go. Done is done. Nice. Okay. Woo. Next on the agenda. Wait, I, I'm confused. Why did you do this now? Hmm? We just said we would allow to have a link. Does the text say that? I think we it all does. said it says should. <laughs> yeah, the word should is in there, right? We could, we could have had the flexibility. It's flexi we, have, we like the flexibility. Pull request accepted. Come on, Arnaud. All right, I, I'll make another pull request to say. There you go. But that's fine. Don't worry about it. As I was saying, in case people didn't hear me in the chaos, that I wish we didn't have to discuss any of this on the call. I only put it on the agenda because progress was not happening offline. So, all right, the next piece is similar, but it's the so we have to thank uh, Rai, he put a lot of effort into con uh, porting basically the documents, the governing documents that were on the wiki onto the, the GitHub repo for the TSC. And uh, as I mentioned in my email last week, when I was canceling the call, that you know, it's not just quite a you know, um, direct uh, copy paste because it kind of, you know, we have made decisions that were not necessarily reflected in some of the wiki pages. And that's part of the effort the, is to consolidate everything. And so there are things like, you know, on the wiki we had like, you know, uh, we talked about the first major release. And then the, the earlier we said, hey, we are going to drop that. And now we talk about promoted release. And so we had a decision somewhere that's in the DS, in TSC uh, decision log that says that, but it was not reflected in the documentation. So as we are pointing to the, to the GitHub repo, we are making those changes to effectively reflect all the decisions that have been made. So there is a bit of massaging involved, and I want to make sure everybody's in sync and uh, is in agreement with what's there. So I don't know of any issues at this point. The, pull request has been up for a while. Several of us have commented. Thank Tracy for a lot of comments <laughs> and uh, helping, you know, um, move the ball forward. And Rai for responding to all our comments and just keeping on updating this PR. So we have today four approvals. So we are far from the 11 members having looked into it and approved and it'd be nice to have at least a majority because it's kind of like the documents we're going to live by and uh, my expectation is once we have landed this pr we will then go to the wiki and say hey this page no longer you know exists or you know I have a link to the to the the document in here instead so before we pull the trigger, I wanted to give people a chance to, you know, raise any concerns here or at least to say, hey, okay, never mind. Go ahead. You can merge it. Of course, none of this is cast in stone and cannot be changed. We will keep evolving it, but it would be good since it's kind of the first uh, effort to consolidate. Nice does, does the wiki allow us to pull something from Git and display it? In other words, when someone's first coming to see what Hyperledger is about and they're trying to read these documents, um, you know, we immediately send them to Git, right? That's what we're into doing. There is a way to include an external web page in Confluence if you want to do that. We also have an option which would be uh, a redirect or something of that nature. Um, I don't have strong feelings about it. How would it work with things like Google searches and stuff like that? If it's all on Git, it's not going to get found, right? Where if it's on our 
wiki page, it might get searched, or do we not allow that aside for Hyperledger? Uh, I have not done anything to prevent Google from creating an index. I mean, I haven't done it, right? Um, so let's find out, right? I mean, there you go, 319 results. So that tells me that the wiki is indexed. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I do want to point out that I made, a, a, I, I guess uh, I had an internal argument about this. Um, would it have been better to do to use uh, Pandoc to make a direct port and then do a, a subsequent PR to actually do the, the, the fixing or to do it all at once? I, did, I made the editorial decision to do it all at once. There were a number of like very small English errors and stuff like that that I fixed. And then there were a lot of wording errors that like uh, Tracy and uh, Arno and I had a back and forth. So yeah, it, I don't think there were any structural changes, but it, there were a lot of uh, English changes. In particular, uh, let's see, there were, there was discussion in the, uh, the, Project lifecycle, which was kind of nonsense, um, that needed to be fixed up. Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, Dano pointed that out. That there was a repeated paragraph here that was talking about some stuff that needed to go away, and so it's gone. Incubation I, exit criteria. Yeah, and I also removed a bunch of uh, discussion around uh, Garrett. There were a lot of references to Garrett or, and so Garrett is in the past, and so it's gone. You win, Dan. You win. Get up one. Um, so it's not just a straightforward of the documents. But I think you made the right choice in in you know going beyond just a simple port as the first step. Everybody look at that and do more PRs on top. It's we don't need that. We have the wiki that's that will still be there. And you can look at the history there if you really care. So the whole point is consolidating this documentation. So that's what we are doing. So anyway, I don't want necessarily to spend more time on this now. I just want to, you know, again, highlight this is important. This is ongoing and uh, people should have a look and approve it if they're okay with it. I don't think there is any reason for any concerns, but maybe you in reviewing, you will find other glitches that should be improved on, but okay. All right, let's move on then. Hopefully we can get enough uh, approval soon to be able to merge this. Yeah, so the next item is project proposals. So, Rai, you went on and put our names and which has this like, you know, with a checkbox, which adds it to a list of tasks in the wiki to a bunch of files, some of which I have to admit, even though they had been there for a while, I was not aware of. <laughs> and um, some of them seem really old and should be disposed of in one way or another and not be in there anymore. Sure, and part of that was that it was pointed out that uh, I think it was the second one here, there's no code development platform. It yep. was pointed out that this didn't show up and uh, that was because it wasn't tagged. Uh, and uh, it also was using the previous format where this list came through with uh, nothing, with a bunch of errors. Uh, so I fixed this and then I looked to see if there were any other items in the project proposal list that also didn't have a tag and also didn't have the TSC membership on. And that's where the solidity that was never disposed of. And I think the multi-language documentation is the other one. So if the TSC yeah. just wants me to like drag those into 2019 finished proposals, I'm totally fine with that. Just Tell me how it is you want to handle that stuff. 
Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it up now. So the multi-language clearly is being taken care of. It's happening anyway, right? So this one is really old. It was just sitting there. We have different efforts going, uh, going on to handle translations of the fabric uh, documentation. I think this should be just put to rest. Yeah, so this is from August of last year. So. Does anyone that has a vote care other than Argo? I mean, I, you know, we commented and there was no reaction from the submitter, right? Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine sweeping them to the reviewed or finished, whatever. Actually, you no, know, there is an answer now. They, they said we decided to use GitHub to maintain fabric documents. So we, we can just close this. Excellent. So then there is the no code development platform one. I think, you know, there's a company behind this. They seem to be eager to bring their, what they call a product to uh, Hyperledger. Several of us have commented now on, uh, you know, there's for now they have not made their code available at all. So, you know, there's no reason to jump the gun here. I think we should keep having the discussion on the wiki page with the uh, submitter and see where that goes. It's not clearly obvious to me how this would actually fit within Hyperledger, although the technology seems to be, you know, within our scope for sure. But uh, they don't seem to be certain they want to bring it here either, and they haven't even open sourced it yet. So there's a, I think quite a few steps they need to work on before they can bring it. I believe I'm talking to this individual later today myself, just personally. So I'll oh, very good. That out. Yeah, just coincidentally. All right, well, that's good news. Great. Okay, and the last one is the Solang Solidity Compiler, which we have talked about, and they basically have re put it on hold for now. So that one, if as far as I'm concerned, could stay here, or we could just move it, and it'll be resurrected when, you know, if that happens, if they want to, the TSC to reconsider it. This one was created though in 2020, right? So it shouldn't be moved to 2019. Yeah, Sean <clears throat> gave us an update and I thought that we sort of suggested that <clears throat> um, he needed to get a little bit more people working in the lab and then I, yeah, so I think if you look at the TSC uh, decision log, you'll see there was an item open for this and mm -hmm. it has been tagged as withdrawn, temporarily yeah. withdrawn by the author. The question is, right. what do we do with that file now? So we create a 2020 finished proposals and we go ahead and put this in there and yeah. Yeah. he's going to create a new proposal in the future. And right. And copy this. Probably right. makes sense. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right, thank you. That takes care of that. All right, so back to the agenda. We have one more item. Thank you, Dave, for adding this. TSC election plan. Yeah, so what you can see there, if you go there. Well, uh, the problem is, hold on, the link doesn't yeah. work for me. Oh, I click on timeline, it goes to a uh, page not found. Yeah, that happened to me too. I renamed the, title right. of the page. And yeah, it's so the, the issue is it's in our private workspace and it, it inherits. Got to move it out. Yeah, uh, is, can everyone see it on the screen? Here, I can also uh, paste it into. Yeah, okay. I, I see it uh, right. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, or once Dave moves it, it'll. Yeah, whatever. We'll make this public, I promise. I just don't okay, want to. But I understand what you're saying. That makes sense. So that's not a, a problem right now. Let's look at the content. Okay, I just put it into the agenda. So if you refresh your agenda, they're there. Yeah. Okay. 
and it's also going to land in the minutes. So, yeah. Um, so Ryan and I were talking over the last month or so that um, it'd be nice to get get thinking about the election coming up. Um, the changes that have happened over policy, or you know, since the last one is that um, the election has been moved to October, so that we're not rushing as everybody comes back from summer break. Although this year. Obviously, summer break is somewhat in question. Um, so anyway, I put together a timeline for us, roughly on how this is going to go. The one thing I want to call out is that nothing is really going to change. We're going to be running the eligibility script that Tracy wrote um, a couple years ago, uh, the second half of August. And then I've been working on a small little web service that will be able to stand up that will allow people to go and punch in their email address and submit it and it will come back and tell you if that email address is in our list of eligible voters. It's our plan for exposing the list of eligible voter emails without exposing the whole list, right? Everybody can individually go and confirm whether their their email address that they've used for contributions is in our list. So other than that, this this is the, the timeline we're planning to execute this fall. I just wanted to let you guys know. Does this mean that the contributions between October 30th and October, I'm sorry, August 30th and October 1st are uh, not eligible or uh, when, when does, when is the eligibility cut off? That's a really good question. Um, I would imagine that it just should cut off on October 4th right when when voting begins so I don't mean to imply that we'll stop running this script I, I think the idea here was that at the end of August was when we were going to build the initial list um, so I, I, I'm fine with cutting it off at August 30th I mean you don't need to uh, just create a bunch of busy work from last minute contributions those contributions will still count for the following election that's right. right. And, and we've been going with August before, so I, uh, uh, yeah. I agree with Dan. If you want to take a decision, you know, I'll move. And Dan, you want a second? We feel like or we need to vote. Vice versa. Yeah. Just you go ahead and move yeah. it. Well, what, what exactly is the, the proposal? I move clearly... that we set the cutoff date for contributions counting towards being eligible to be elected as of August 30th. And voting, right? Yep, I will. I'll take okay. the minutes. Okay, and August thirty. Just out of uh, just out of curiosity, why August thirtieth, not August thirty first? And there's thirty one days in August. Uh, whatever. <laughs> thirty one. Uh, I get thirty one. Uh, I, I guess someone didn't pay attention during first grade. Okay. Thank you for uh, your contribution, Gary. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, my, okay, my, my question is, does this mean that we're going to have like a slightly, we're going to have 13 months, right? Is that the, is that the question that you're asking, Tracy? Uh, I was asking specifically about the end date for eligibility. Mm -hmm. I would assume that the begin date for eligibility is whatever the last day was of the last cutoff. Yeah. Um, or or yeah. the day after the last day of the cutoff, however you want to say that. Right, so that's why I'm at. So there's like there's a larger window for this election because we're making the election later, and then the year that's after. Correct. Okay, I just want to, want to make sure I was accurately understanding what it was you're asking. Yeah, no, I was I was curious about the end date of the eligibility, um, but I do think it's worthwhile to put in like what is the eligibility range, right, so that people understand what this vote is representing. Mm -hmm. Noted. I will. Uh, I'll mark that here. Hey, just want to point it out, August 30th is the Sunday, 31st is a Monday. So if you want to count the weekend, there might be a reason, but just wanted to point it out. Well, that will vary from year to year, right? So I don't know if it matters, but thanks. Yeah. So <clears throat> do, do we, uh, I have to launch rocket chat, it's broken. <laughs> Do you want me to put in the chat what I'm? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. It, it well, Dave, you, me. You got to <laughs> didn't didn't we yeah. move a lot of this to their discretion and not require votes by the TSC? 
Yeah, th this was not really asking for a movement move, but although Chris makes a good point of setting the cutoff, this is something we haven't addressed yet, officially. So, yeah, so maybe I, I'm good just go way. ahead and work that into the official document, and if we feel like we need a vote after all the details are finalized, then we can take a vote. Yeah, in and in fact, that's a good point. That was the decision <laughs> we made previously, right? We said they would, the team would come up with the plan, present it to the TSC for approval before we execute. So, okay. Well, then um, this will come up in the agenda next week. I'll have more formal page i'll have the page in the right place on the wiki so you guys can all see it and we'll take a roll call vote i i, I had a couple questions so there's a month before we close voting and we actually vote yeah what's your question right. so we, we're not doing anything in september that's intentional i was just wondering about first grade and the months you know i know gary doesn't always get them right um <laughs> The other question I had was, I'm I think right. <laughs> one of the things we had discussed after last year's voting is the voting happens in one week. And if people are out for that week, they might not vote. Um, and we had talked about maybe splitting the vote up, still keep it a week long, but split it up over a two week increment. Where October 4th is a Monday and the 10th is or it's like it goes Sunday to Saturday or something like that. So <clears throat> I just didn't know how people felt about that. I think it was tougher last year when we were doing it in the middle of summer vacations. Right. That's why we moved it to October. Okay. I guess I did, my point was I didn't know if we wanted to run over two different calendar weeks, but still only be a week long. Oh. So like started on the 7th and ended on the 13th or something. But it's up to you guys. Okay, I'm taking these questions down. Um, I'll move this page over in the wiki and I'll send the link out to the TSC list and we'll discuss these there, I guess. I'll, I'll make sure that I bring up these questions and we'll... Thank you. Sounds good. I, I think the other question or comment that I have is uh, twofold. Um, one, do we put in here about the election of the TSC chair and vice chair? And then secondly, do we put the date effective for the next TSC? Because I know we've always had this issue of we publish the results and there's like this question of once the results are published, is the new TSC taking on the responsibility or is the previous TSC taking on the responsibility? Um, so I guess that's just a couple of other things to think through. Yeah. Good questions. Uh, I, Those propose, are great. I propose that the TSC term ends on the 31st of December. And so the, <laughs> no. Whatever, whatever we pick. The 29th of February. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get out. <laughs> are, are we going to have an so inauguration and everything? I think that what we did last year, or this, this past year, I should say, is that we agreed that uh, it, it would take effects the following week. Um, right? Because we needed to get people set up for the mailing list and everything notified. And so we, right. and you had to, after the you vote, had we the, had one more meeting of the existing TSC. We invited the others to come and participate, but they didn't formally begin their term until uh, the, the following week. Right, yeah. because after the public announcement of the election, then there's like a week-long period of the TSC voting their people in. So there has to, oh, there doesn't have to. There's no law of physics, but it would be easier if there was like, a one meeting grace period. Yeah, so I, 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 got I think to we should also, continue that. That's, that's what I'm saying. Th there's got to be some some grace period because you you also need to have the chair election. You need mm -hmm. some time for this. Otherwise, you have a TSC call where possibly, you know, say the chair is not being reelected at all on the TSC. What do you do? You chair less? Mm -hmm. 
So, so, yeah, and I, I think so, yeah, so I, like I propose two. that publisher and then whatever the next Thursday is, that would be the existing TSC and then the following week would be the new one. So in this case, we would publish on the 10th, then that transition meeting where it's both the old and the new would happen on the 15th. And then the new TSC would take over their first meeting on the 22nd of October. Yeah, I'm Sounds just good. looking at the calendar. So, so in, the, in the past, right, uh, you give a week for the TSC members to decide whether they want to run for chair. And then there's supposed to be another week for the vote of the chair, right? So I, I right. just feel like there's, there's a kind of additional two weeks. And I'm not sure that based on the dates that you're telling me, if it's 11th and the 15th, that, that gives you the two weeks that you want. Well, the other okay. way to make this line up on the calendar is if we just said the new TSC takes over the 1st of November, that gives us like a solid three weeks at the end of October to transition, to have their, you know, get everybody on the mailing list, have their chair elections, have the handover meetings and all that stuff. I mean, that's the other way to look at this. Okay, guys, so, we don't need to figure out all, all the details right now. I think this discussion right. is helpful because it kind of right. gives the staff food for thoughts. I trust they can take that and bring us back a plan that would make sense. We can look at it and comment and then figure it out if there is problems. And, yep. and I would appreciate if what we bring back is considered to be probably the final version. I don't think we really want to have a lot of minutia discussion about uh, each item individually. We will on the TSC, Dan, on the TSC mailing list. And then next week, hopefully, we'll have them all ha hammered out. I won't bring it back to this meeting until we've got them all hammered out. Thanks. Yeah, I was I was really happy to get past the porting of the documents discussion without any uh, kibitzing about uh, the fonts that I had chosen. So I was surprised. <laughs> oh, right. right. Just wait for the PRs. Uh, bring it. That's all I can say, man. Bring it. <laughs> all right. Thank you for your time and attention on the election thing. You've got to love how the TSC members love getting into the gory of those discussions that are non tactical that everybody thinks we shouldn't spend time on. <laughs> anyway, is there any other any other idea that you know people want to throw in just for food for thoughts for the staff on that issue? Don't encourage that. <laughs> okay, so given that we're done with this, let's move on. I think that's the end of the agenda. Is there anything else anybody wants to bring up on this call now? Good answers. I, I think that since this was uh, merged, this should be approved, right? Oh, yes, yes, I think we can mark that as approved. All right, we can do that better. I, I want to close the call now. It seems like we have uh, run out of items and I'm happy to give everybody back 15 minutes. So all for that, let's close this call on this. Thank you all for joining. Wait, we'll wait, see wait, if we have wait. a call next week or not. Arno. Thanks, Arno. Thank you. We don't want to do the project update. No, we, we went through this quickly. There was no questions, so that's it. Thank All you right. for submitting your report. Great, Thank thanks. You. There, there is a question uh, in the group chat. Uh, the wow. next one in two weeks, question mark? And the answer is no. The decision, I think, was to not move this to a two-weekly, bi-weekly. No, that's meeting. right. Just to clarify in case there are people who were confused, we are officially still on a weekly calendar, a weekly schedule. And I, I, you know, I may cancel it depending on whether there is enough to make it worthwhile or not, but you shouldn't assume it will be in two weeks. It might be next week. Well, makes sense. Thank you.